this morning I want to uh, talk about um, something that just came flooding into my mind real fresh about a week or two ago. And it had to do with me having a conversation with one of my um, associates. And the conversation uh, that we were, were having, this thought came up. And the, and the subject matter of this thought is, are you born again? Now, a lot of us, we um, accept the handle or the labeling of Christian. And a lot of us, because of past obligations and past uh, ministries or introduction to what we now label as salvation, had to be inducted into Christianity uh, through confessing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as well as saying a sinner's prayer. And then that it was followed up by us attaching ourselves to a local church and joining that church and submitting ourselves to the Bible training of that particular church or ministry. That's our introduction into Christianity. But I don't know if we really uh, embrace the idea uh, of being born again. So comes the question, are you born again? And, you know, people joke about it if, you know, you go down a dry devil, we're talking about baptism, and you come up a wet devil and so forth and so on. But there has to be something that uh, shows us or identifies us as genuinely being born again uh, persons. And it has to be it has to be evidence of this genuine born again mindset. And so we're going to take a look at one verse of scripture, a couple of verses of scripture, but particularly in one particular area, uh, which is found in John chapter three. So let's go over to the iPad real quick and pick out some verses from John chapter three that will help us with this discussion. In John chapter three, verse two. Through three says, this man came to Nicodemus, and this man is talking about Nicodemus. I mean, came to Nicodemus. This man is talking about Jesus. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are uh, a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, same chapter, uh, verse five. He says, uh, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Verse 7 reads, Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. It's obvious from these verses of Scripture that Nicodemus was amazed at the word are miracles that came through Jesus's ministry. What impressed Nicodemus wasn't Jesus's teaching, but the miracles that was present in his ministry. He said no one could do this work or show these signs unless they come from God and that God was with them. The signs and wonders that accompany you in your ministry will testify that God is with you. And now that's very, very important. We have so many ministries, so many different opinions and interpretations of the Bible. But with these interpretations of the Bible, there is a noticeable, noticeable lack of power. The three key words that should be uh, identified with any ministry that flows from um, Jesus uh, and from Jesus anointing and sending you in ministry and you following and submitting yourself to that. Now, now, let me back up one step. Many have been called by Christ, considered in ministry by Christ, but have abandoned the mindset that comes with that anointing and that positioning of Christ. We adopt, uh, uh, we conform to this world's way of thinking. And this world's way of thinking is not outside of the church, but I'm talking about uh, religious thinking. And religious thinking will cover uh, the anointing that God has breathed into your life. So that it will be a demonstration of wonders or signs following your ministry, which will be the work and the proof of you being sent forth from Christ. We're not talking about what's argumental, how you can argue scripture. We're not talking about um, how 
how you can debate scripture. We're talking about actually being obedient because you are in the kingdom of God and you are doing as Christ did. You you actually can see the kingdom of God. You actually have the kingdom of God's mindset and you actually see the Father at work. In fact, you are imitating, okay, mimicking the work of the Father that you see in the kingdom, that which is done in the kingdom. Not which is done in this world, not which is done, not which is uh, that which is done um, through religion, but that which you see by your renewed mind as you look into the kingdom of God. Now, when we go back to this, you'll notice that Jesus says um, that no man, uh, no, uh, so I'm sorry, um, what am I looking for? that Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now what Nicodemus saw was the works, the wonders that was coming to the ministry of Christ, that evidence, the work evidence that he was from God. But he didn't see the kingdom of God. He just saw the works. And a lot of people uh, are after the evidence of the work without actually entering into the mindset of the kingdom because everyone in the kingdom of God that sees the kingdom of God, that imitates the will of God in time as they see it in spirit, they can do the work and the wonders. There's no degree of difficulty with miracles. All it takes is a sign, a mental uh, uh, transform, uh, uh, how, how we mentally transform our thought life in our thinking that will help us see the kingdom of God and and the work that follows us will demonstrate that hey we are from God people will watch you a long time see the work flow from you and they themselves will testify you are from God you would never have to testify to yourself that you're from God the work would do the test will be the, your testimony that you're from God this is believed in so many circles that people actually fake the works of God. They would do fake work, fake miracles. They would do tricks. They would take up the role of being magicians and 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 mind. Um, um, well, anyway, they will mess with your mind, make you think you're seeing a miracle when you actually just seeing a performance. They know how powerful the work is and how powerful you will be if the work accompanies you. But they don't have that anointing, so they're faking it, trying to get people. To follow them based on their fake anointing that they have. But genuinely, people who can genuinely see God and genuinely see the kingdom of God, they become like Christ and imitate God. Jesus' response uh, is eye opening as well. Jesus tells him that unless one is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. From Jesus, uh, uh, from Jesus's statement, the results of miracles are sign, are wonders, signs and wonders accompanying you in your ministry, is directly connected to you being born again and you seeing the kingdom of God. This reminds me of a, 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 a correction in scripture. And this correction has to do with the statement that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. The correction says that scripture, that scripture should read, now, faith is a substantiation of things hoped for. Faith substantiates what's uh, there, just like your eye substantiates what uh, we are seeing. And that's important. Faith, the five senses can't see what faith sees. Faith is like your eyes. Your eyes substantiate what you see. And so does faith. Faith substantiates what you see as well as your eyes. So your eyes substantiate that you're looking at your computer screen or your television and you see me. Faith substantiate what is real in spirit, what is the kingdom of God, how the kingdom of God moves and operates. Faith substantiates that and you see what's real and you call that which is real in spirit into time and you actually have conviction in your heart of what you're seeing, not doubting, but conviction of what you're seeing. And you will create into the natural world or into time what you see in spirit. So that's what faith will do. And faith only announces not what the world sees or the premise of the world. Faith only announces the premise and of what the kingdom of God standards 
part toward all men. We have to learn to see all men the way that God sees all men. And God doesn't see condemnation. That God doesn't see corruption in men. God doesn't see sickness because God created it. So once we see how God sees, then we can dismantle what we, mankind, has created because we will call those things that be not as though they were. Those things that in the spirit will supersede those things that are temporary. The eternal will actually swallow up the temporary. So you see that a soul is eternally blessed, eternally healed, eternally forgiven, and you call that as their truth, and you call it with conviction. You will create an opportunity and an experience for them to be exactly as you see them. You will help them see themselves differently because they see themselves based on the conformity of the world's thinking. They conform to the world's thinking. They have conformed to the thinking of right and wrong. They have conformed to the thinking of good and bad. They have conformed to the thinking of weak and strong. And they have judged themselves as being weak or afflicted or sick. They have judged themselves as being unworthy. You don't see that because those statements and positions do not exist in the kingdom of God. What you see that so as in the kingdom of God is an eternal state. It never ends, has no beginning, has no end. So when you call that, when you say that eternal state, you're not lying. You are actually replacing an illusion with the truth, with reality that never passes away. Their life will never pass away. Their life is God-given. Their anointing is God-given. Their assignment is God-given. It is eternal. God will not change his mind toward them. When you begin to hear what your father is saying about that soul, and you say only what he says about that soul, then you have the same result in, in, in your ministry as Jesus had in his ministry. Because he says, I don't say anything that I haven't heard my father say. I don't do anything that I have not seen my father do. For us, we have to be born again, not of body, but of mind. We have to renew our mind. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind to see things different. Our premises change, our logic change, and our verbiage change. Because what we see is what we, we say. We can't see evil because we don't acknowledge evil. We, we are looking beyond the surface. We are looking beyond the five senses. We are looking with the eyes of faith. That is evidence. Your born again life should be evidence with, an, with, with you um, subs, uh, having your five senses subside and your faith rise. Your five senses that give you, put you in contact with the world, with yourself, with what goes on in the world, with the logic of the world, that will subside. And your faith, because of the renewing of your mind, will rise. All right. So your five senses and their, its logic will diminish where the logic of your faith will ascend and become the major point of your your view, your statement, and your outlook about life. And then that word is God's word that comes out of your mouth, and it's his word that proceeds out of your mouth that God watches over and will perform. And, and that performance will bring signs and wonders in your life. And this is not just for a select few. This is for everyone who is a child of God, because every soul has been placed into the body of Christ, and every soul is a um, citizen of the kingdom of God, all right? So we teachers just are alerting and making you aware and heralding the fact of your already born-again status because it's God who placed you in Christ. It's not being baptized with water. It's not confessing Jesus as Lord. All of that is proper, and all of it, all that has its place but it's not just that. It's the fact that God, not man, but God has placed you in Christ. And now you're in the kingdom of God. And the spirit of God is upon you. So we awaken you to that spirit, the spirit of God. We awaken you to the voice of God. We train you how to listen to the voice of God and how to change your premise of what you're looking at in this world. When you begin to see that, when it's not right and wrong, but it's eternal life that you're looking at and 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 looking for, it becomes easier and easier for you to see it 
and obtain everything and every promise that God has given you because he set you into his promise. He set you into his finished work. And so from that position is you casting all your care onto God, rejoicing, okay, and embracing the power of God that has gone before you. You also want to embrace the peace of God. You recognize that it is not you that have to do the work, but God has set you into his finished work, then you can enter God's rest. And when you enter God's rest, you will be uh, uh, aware of his peace that will guard your hearts, okay? His peace. And then then you, from, from that position of peace, because if you rest with God, your eyes will be open to the plenty, to, to every need. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. There's plenty for you. There's no such thing as lack. There is abundance or plenty. You have, you have abundance of love, abundance of joy, abundance of health, abundance of well-being, abundance of finances. You're just abundantly blessed. There's plenty for you. There's no scarcity in the Spirit of God at all. So the power of peace and the plenty that's in spirit will become very, uh, you become very aware of, and you will be able to obtain that and bring that into your life now in time. These works will follow you. They will accompany you wherever you go. All right? So that's what we want to talk to you about today. And that's really the, the basis of our conversation now. <laughs> Much more to say together. I just want you to make sure that you are born again and the fact that you're born again is because you have a desire to renew your mind. You have a desire to set aside those things that, that are temporary, set aside those things that are beggarly, set aside those things that are elementary, right? That control you through your five senses and embrace those things that are eternal, that are birthed in you by faith. Yes, in this world you have to fight what they call, you have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to purposely walk by faith. It's a purposeful thing. It's not something you do once and then it's a once over and then it's, it's, that's, that's going to be your life. It's something you have to do every day. For some of us, we have to do it every moment, every second of the day. We have to keep bringing our minds back to faith, God's finished work. And remember not to take on anything, not to take on any worry, not to take on any anxiety, not to take on anything, but cast all those cares over to God because he first cared for you and just abide in God's love. And when you abide in God's love, you need to share that. You need to love others as God has loved you. You should, you should love others as yourself, as yourself has been loved by God. You should extend that love to each and every soul that you meet. Don't try to conquer the world. Just deal with your circle. Deal with your family. Deal with your church uh, members. Deal with your community, love that to that extension, and that will catch on and become worldwide. You are the witness that God has set in place in time for such a time as this. You are the one that God has faith in. Now, you need to have faith in yourself and faith in the faith that God has given you. You are born again. If anyone asks you, just say, yes, I am born again. And signs and wonders accompany me. I see you, I see in you the hope of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I see in you the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I see in you the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I see in you the love of God. And all I see in you is eternal. And all these things about you, that you have it in your body, the ailments, the sickness, they are all temporary. They all fall away. And they fall away to the eternal truth that you are healed that you are whole. Though you may have physical ailments, you are not a body. Your spirit and the spirit of your mind is healthy, and you should rejoice in the health of your spirit. Never to be afflicted, never to be weak, always to be strong, all right? Always to be powerful, always to have plenty of joy, all right? And to abide in, in peace forever. This is how I see you. This is what I pronounce to you. You are as God created you. You are powerful. You are, you are, you are, you have peace, and, and that peace that you have is eternal, and, and, and it protects your heart, and you have plenty, plenty of abundance, plenty of whatever you need in life. God has given you everything 
that pertains to godliness and to life. You have plenty. You're not lacking nowhere. All you have to do is trust God. Even if you don't trust God, even when we're faithless, he remains faithful. Wonderful, wonderful. So don't even worry about, do I have enough faith? God has all the faith you and I need in Jesus' name. Well, uh, this is Dr. Will Reed, and I just want to encourage you today to remember that God has plans for your life and none of those plans.